phoning an overseas number that is first of all charging you. <laughs> Going on a ski trip is a huge deal. It takes a lot of planning and a lot of organization and often there are a lot of mistakes that are made whether you're going for the first time or whether you're an experienced ski traveler. So today I'm going to talk about the biggest ski travel mistakes that you can avoid. Now we're going to move on to everybody's favorite subject which is money and number 12 is not getting travel insurance. A lot of things can go wrong on a ski holiday, whether that's cancelled flights, that's um, transfers not turning up, that is issues with your hotel booking, and worst of all, an accident. Someone gets injured, and more often than not, those are a hugely expensive um, incidents that take place. But having insurance is a big, big thing to fall back on. One of the things to really know when it comes to injuries and your travel insurance, your ski travel insurance. Make sure that you are covered when it comes to skiing off piste. A lot of the normal travel insurance packages that you will buy when you go skiing do not cover this. It's fine if you're never gonna go skiing off piste, but if you are someone that likes to enjoy a bit of the thrills and the challenges, maybe even you like heli skiing, again, make sure that you're covered for these things before you go out on your ski trip. Another monetary mistake is not bringing any foreign currency with you out on holiday. There's a lot of new cards going on, a lot of uh, travel cards. I have one myself from the post office. You have things like Monzo and Revolut, and these are great new cards that you can use where you can actually have foreign currency preloaded onto your card. The only problem is that there are still banks around in these foreign countries that will take maybe one, two, three euros even when you're withdrawing euros from these cards. So it's far better to still maybe do the old fashioned way of buying euros before you come out or another currency before you come out to your holiday. You don't want to keep your foreign currency on you at all times. If you're staying in hotels or chalets, there will be safes. Do not keep them in the luggage that you came out with, sat in the corner, because um, as the week progresses, you're gonna forget it that it's there. Number 14 is failing to tell your bank that you're going abroad. Now, as far as I'm aware, HSBC no longer need you to inform them when you travel abroad, but that will not apply, I'm, I presume, to a lot of other banks still. And there is nothing the worse than trying to withdraw money out overseas only finding that A, your card gets eaten, or B, uh, it gets declined and you're not allowed to withdraw anything because then you have to spend hours on your phone phoning an overseas number that is first of all charging you and then you have to go through the security procedure of resetting your account. They ask you for your, um, you know, your internet key password or whatever, which of course you're not gonna have while you're with you overseas. You get the picture, avoid it, just to play it safe, let your bank know when you're going away, for how long for, and when you'll be back. 